when did it strike you that that driving was was a metaphor for um, sort of individual determination? I forget the the words you use specifically, but um, you know, driving yourself essentially. Yeah. Well, I guess <clears throat> the maybe the overarching concern <clears throat> of the book is for the status of the individual. And uh, in particular, what I see is an erosion of the space for skilled action and intelligent human action. Because so much of, uh, so many domains of human activity have gotten colonized by kind of systems that want to do it for us, whether it's a bureaucracy or some tech. Um, I think you can think of driverless cars, for example, as one instance of this wider pattern, uh, really a shift in our relationship to the physical world in which the demands of skill and competence give way to a promise of safety and convenience, uh, sort of taking human beings out of the control loop. And I think if you go far enough down that road, uh, eventually the whole world starts to look like one big assisted living facility. You, um, you describe, um, I'm thinking of uh, Frederick Hayek talks about scientism and, and the efforts by the economics profession to try to turn human action and all of its complexities into an equation so that it be better represents um, the physical sciences and and this, there's there's a similarity here where where so much of public policy is is trying to engineer the humanity out of 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 human systems and replace it with uh, ultimately something like a driverless car, the presumption being that that's that's safer. And I think you might even argue that that's not necessarily the case and looked at in its totality. Well, there's interesting factual questions about the, you know, the, the actual engineering with driverless cars and just how safe they're likely to be and how likely the whole vision is to come to fruition. And, uh, you know, the people involved in driverless cars have gotten, they're not quite as bullish as they were, say, five years ago when we were hearing that, oh, you know, by 2020, <laughs> we'd all be in driverless cars. Um, and... Clearly, the, the whole push for driverless cars uh, is very much a top-down kind of thing. It's not a response to consumer demand. When, when Pew polls people about their attitudes to driverless cars, they don't really trust it. They don't seem to think they really need it or want it. But there's, you know, asserting the inevitability of it, I think, serves a couple functions. It, it serves to demoralize any kind of political opposition to it. Um, you sort of offered this picture of the future as though it's a prediction, uh, which is a good way to attract investment and, and so forth. Mm -hmm.